Bridge in Florida has collapsed with multiple fatalities, according to the Highway Patrol. The newly installed 950-ton bridge at the Florida International University collapsed this afternoon. The Highway Patrol officials have confirmed multiple fatalities. Stay with LBC for any updates. And this bridge was only installed last Saturday. And you may remember a few months ago, a train crash on a line on its first ever day. So I guess some pretty big questions going to be asked in the aftermath of this about new infrastructure in the USA. But of course, the other story that is dominating not just British news, but in many ways news across the entire West, is the Russia poisoning scandal. Or should I say, should I really say, the act of terrorism that took place in Salisbury a few days ago. And I say that because if any hardline Muslim group or far-right extremist group was linked you know, to nerve agents spreading about in the atmosphere, it would be called terrorism. And that, I think, is how we should think of Salisbury, to, you know, regardless whether we've made our minds up as to who's responsible. But a big consensus is now forming. Donald Trump interviewed today for the first time on this, said it looks like Russia was behind the Salisbury poisoning. And indeed, the Trump administration today have imposed sanctions on 19 Russians for allegedly interfering in the US election, including 13 indicted by the special counsellor, Robert Mueller. And in Europe, well, last night, one of Macron's officials said Theresa May had jumped the gun. There was no evidence whatsoever. The Times ran this on the front page. But today, in an act of solidarity, the French, the Germans have come together. And Donald Tusk, on behalf of the European Council, has said, I express my full solidarity with Theresa May in the face of this brutal attack. I'm ready to put the issue on next week's agenda. Next week, of course, being the big summit that's taking place in Brussels on Brexit. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn today has defended his stance, uh, but he has said he totally condemns the attack. And he also added the evidence points towards Russia. And of course, the Russians themselves uh, today have responded and they are not impressed at all. In fact, they're rather blaming Britain for fanning anti-Russian rhetoric bordering on hysteria. Hysteria. Uh, Mr Lavrov, their foreign minister, said we're doing it in an attempt to rally support from our allies. Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, we have rallied support from our allies. In fact, this is the first time since Theresa May has been prime minister that, in fact, she's been the person that the world leaders are calling to talk to. And here's a little clue as to what I want to discuss tonight, because a Sky data poll is out this evening. And it, astonishingly, it says, when asked to choose, which of the two leaders would you prefer to be in charge of the UK's relationship with Rus Russia, Mrs May is preferred over Corbyn by 69% to 31%. At no point in her premiership has she been at the centre of a global debate. At no point in her premiership has she appeared to be this tough. And at no point in her premiership, have the public said, wow, we think you're doing a really good job. And in response to all of this, Mrs May today went to visit the Market Square in Salisbury, the scene of the crime. Bear in mind, two people are still critically ill in hospital. She was there to meet the police, to meet the local authorities, to do a tour of the area. But it very quickly changed into something really quite different. I've never even seen this from the Prime Minister before. She was carrying a bunch of flowers. There was a big smile on her face. I thought for the moment, is that the Queen? Or is it Theresa May? And she then fist bumps someone in the crowd. I mean, I'm surprised Theresa May even knows what a fist bump is. I've never seen her looking happier. Um, and I have to say, I did think, hang on, you know, you're visiting the site of something you were telling us 24 hours ago is a great national emergency and you're behaving although it's some great big giant street party and celebration. And added to that, the Defence Secretary, his name is Gavin Williamson, I know very few of you will even know that, but our Defence Secretary is called Gavin Williamson and here he was speaking earlier today. What we will do is we will look at what Russia how Russia responds to what we have done. 
It is absolutely atrocious, atrocious and outrageous what Russia did in Salisbury. We have responded to that. Frankly, Russia should go away. It should shut up. Oh, well, that's diplomatic, isn't it? I mean, wow. I mean, is that the sort of thing we really expect from senior politicians in this country? And I put it to you tonight for this debate that this government has got carried away with their popularity in the polls over their handling of this Russia investigation. They've pinned the blame firmly on the Russian administration without actually any direct proof of anything more that that is where the agent came from. And by the way, I personally think a Russian actor did do this. I just don't know whether he or she was sanctioned by the regime. Is this government getting carried away? And are they in danger? Perhaps if the story was to change in the next couple of weeks of heading into a situation where perhaps they could be accused of hubris. Now, look, if you think Mrs May is fantastic, this is the best leadership we've seen in this country since Margaret Thatcher and the Falklands, then call me on 0345 6060 Or perhaps, like me, you think her performance today in Salisbury was triumphalist at a scene of a very unpleasant, nasty terrorist crime, then text to 84850. Or maybe you think, do you know what? Let them have their minute. Brexit, it's given the most wonderful distraction. Give her a few days in the sun, because by next Thursday, she'll be back in the middle of that summit. In which case, tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC and watch me on Facebook. I'm live here in London. You can comment there too. Phil is a brand new caller to this show, and he calls from Swansea. Good evening, Phil. Oh, good evening, Nigel. So, I, I mean, Phil, I just got this sort of slight, almost triumphalist tone today about the yeah. way May behaved in Salisbury. Am I being mean-spirited? Uh, no, I, I think everyone's jumping on the gun a bit, actually. Um, but in, in passing, I did hear um, Theresa May's uh, speech in the House of Commons uh, when she first announced the Russians, and um, I, I sort of thought about how would that be transposed into a court of law if some individual was being tried with a sort uh, attempted murder. And the, the, the counsel for the prosecution came up and said, well, I think it's highly like he'd done it, Your Honour, uh, and I don't <laughs> like him. Uh, I, th I think case dismissed would be the first words we hear from the judge. But the, the, uh, one, uh, the one point I wanted to make, why should the Russians go out of their way to, to use a, a method of attack which is most conveniently likely to point to themselves as the most likely perpetrators? Rather than, you know, there's a hundred and eight hundred ways to assassinate someone you can push them off a building. Well, and, um, Phil, the argument the argument for that is that mm -hmm. this Sunday we have the elections in Russia, and of course, once again, Mr. Putin is a candidate. You know, he talked, um, had he not, um, about traitors who will get dealt with, and a very Russian method of dealing with a former traitor could mm. Phil, could be seen within Russia. As, you know, you don't mess with us, you don't sell our state secrets. I'm guessing, Phil, that's the argument. Yeah, I, it's not convincing to me. I mean, I mean if anything, um, it sounds like a frame-up to me. And, and, and take the case about... Um, well, uh, Phil, yeah. if, it, if it's a frame-up, mm. and I've been asking this all week, and no yeah. one yet can really answer this, yeah. if it's a frame-up... Who is doing the framing? Well, I, I should have thought it, it would be a government who wants to show, uh, put um, the Russians in a bad light. I can't think who, but... Um, is yeah. it not more likely, Phil? Yeah. Is it not... I, mean, I, I would put this to you. Is it not more likely? And given... And there's a very interesting piece in the mm. Irish Times today by somebody who was their Moscow correspondent back in the early 1990s, and he pointed out that in that chaotic period after the Berlin Wall had come down, everything went missing including, without doubt, some of this chemical agent. Is it not more likely, rather than it being a foreign government framing somebody up, that it's a former Russian operative who's either got a vendetta or actually deliberately wants to put Putin to be seen to be in a bad light? Yeah, but um, then again, you know, the, the argument still holds. You know, I mean, it's too obvious, isn't it, really, to use a nerve agent. Moreover, when that uh, can be m most conveniently with the Russian... Well, Phil, do you know what? Who's going to believe it? Given that, given that Putin is going to win this election on Sunday comfortably anyway, why would he take the risk is the other argument. Phil, did our Prime Minister today look like a stateswoman in Salisbury fist-bumping people? Well, 
a bit over the top, I think. OK. <laughs> All right, Phil, I thank you very much for your call. Surely now, Theresa May should realise that if she could stand as firm on Brexit, the country would be right behind us, says Paul from Epsom. Paul, I'm really, really hoping so. And I'm going to be there next Thursday at that summit, and I'll be cheering her on from the sidelines. Terry is calling from Archway. Good evening, Terry. Good evening, Nigel. Hi, thank you. Um, this whole situation has got me deeply depressed, and, and I think Theresa May is getting a lot of praise from this, a kind of a chorus of fools. And, of course, praise from a fool is no praise at all. You know, Boris, uh, you know, his hair seems to be getting more wild. He looks more, more like a clown every day, and he has a frightening joke song and a poison chalice to hand. In taking away from Putin this important we don't have many cards to play and and these get out of jail cards in international politics are very important now what's going to happen the next time the the neocons in Washington push put pressure on him in Ukraine or put pressure on him in Syria and he acts to defend himself has he had his last chance are we there are we finally there is that what, you know because these bombs are 14,000 times more powerful than, than Hiroshima was Nigel yeah, no, Terry, the last thing we want is to get into a conflict with Russia. Um, and the last thing we should do is mm. is to rush to judgment. But surely, Terry, surely, mm. I'm plain devil's advocate here, surely for the Prime Minister to have stood up and said to the House of Commons, we're pretty convinced it is Russia, she must have had something more than she's told us. Well, you know, if you want to speak to the bloke who, who made it, he's got a big house in Princeton, you could just knock on his gate and, and have a chat with him. But, you know, do you remember way back at the beginning of the Ukraine conflict, there was that conversation between Kathy Ashton and the Estonian foreign minister, yep. which was intercepted, in which she was told that snipers were shooting people on both sides of the barricades. Nothing was done, she wasn't interested, and years later, we're still set up for a war over over you know over the ukraine and over the russians over this when when really i think that, that it all went far too far and they were beaten back last time with this pressure on putin now if they ramp up the forces in ukraine i'm afraid you know we're going to yeah. see a reaction from putin well, terry if you poke the russian bear with a stick don't be surprised when you get a reaction thank you you're listening to the nigel farage show exclusively on obc it's now 7:16. Theresa May has never seen poll ratings like it, as a Sky Data poll says. That when people are asked the question, if you're asked to choose which two, which of the two leaders would you prefer to be in charge of our relationship with Russia, May gets 69% and Jeremy gets 31%. Dave says to me, she's doing well. Corbyn would have said, oh, well, uh, yes, and run off. Well, Jeremy Corbyn got a lot of of stick yesterday, including from his own side. And a big consensus has formed around the Prime Minister, not just in Parliament, the Germans, the Americans, and after a bit of toing and froing, the French as well. I just get worried. You know, whenever, whenever I see a consensus on something, when everybody agrees, it really worries me they could just all be wrong. I do think that a Russian actor perpetrated this act, and it is, folks, an act of terrorism. There's no other way of looking or thinking about it, in my opinion. But was that person actually acting on orders from Putin and the Kremlin? And the answer is, we don't know. And the Prime Minister doesn't know, because if she did, she would have told us. Nonetheless, she's rocketing in the polls, she's been seen to be strong, she's at the centre of international attention for the first time since she was Prime Minister, but is she getting carried away when she turns up at the scene of that crime and starts fist-bumping people in the crowds? And then we've got, and I want to just listen to this again, this is our Defence Secretary, folks, Gavin Williamson is his name, I doubt you've ever heard of him, this is him today. What we will do is we will look at what Russia how Russia oh, responds to what we have done. It is absolutely atrocious, atrocious and outrageous what Russia did in Salisbury. We have responded to that. Frankly, Russia should go away, it should shut up. Oh dear, I mean, it sounds like a little boy, doesn't it? Hussam says, Gavin was told to act. The poor boy came up with those childish lines as an attempt to show that he's upset. Either way, not really 
I would have thought, quite the right tone to strike. It all looks a bit triumphalist. It all looks a bit opportunist. It all looks like they think, way, we're going up in the polls. We're doing well. I'm not sure that's quite the right way to deal with this. Anthony is calling from Staines. Good evening, Anthony. Good evening, Nigel. So, well, I think the reason... Yes? Did she strike the right tone in Salisbury today? I think she did, because don't forget, she's taken quite some time to get down there. She didn't rush down there, for one thing. Uh, so she, she would have been accused, I think, of cashing in on this incident if she'd rushed down the, the day after, say. All right. Uh, don't forget also, after Grenfell, she was very solemn and very reserved. I think it was quite a But, of course, she had a terrible reaction to that after Grenfell. Anthony, so the, Anthony, 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 hang on. The problem with Grenfell was she turned up, she shook hands with the fire chief, the police chief, and disappeared. You know, the Queen, aged 91, uh, you know, went round the centre and spoke to people who'd lost their possessions and lost relations. It was the fact she wouldn't engage with people. So I guess, in some ways, I can understand why she would want to meet the crowds. But if, you, but if, you, if you're going, Anthony, to a place that we've been told all this week, you know, is the scene of this horrible crime that could have risked, well, goodness knows how many people's lives, surely it shouldn't turn into a street party. I think that was just uh, adrenaline. It was a rush of blood to the head. And why not? I mean, why shouldn't we wave the flag a little bit? We've got to be very cautious over this whole incident because, you know, the forensics have still got to come back. I know. Uh, so we've got to be very cautious about the triumphalism. Can you imagine, Anthony, can you imagine if in a couple of weeks' time it turned out that, you know, a former Russian agent who'd had access to their full box of tricks had actually sort of, you know, stolen some of this chemical and had used it as part of a personal vendetta. I mean, what happened to May today would look like an act of hubris, wouldn't it? It may well do, but it certainly looked better than Jeremy Corbyn's reaction, which has been not to stand behind the flag and not to stand behind the people of Salisbury, but witter on about the NHS and about his usual script. Cut and cuts. Cuts, cu cuts, Anthony. Remember, everything's going wrong because of cuts. Of course. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> look, I, I, don't, I, don't, look, I don't disagree with that. No, look, Anthony, she has look strong. It's the only time I've ever seen her as Prime Minister looking strong, looking confident, being at the centre of global attention. I just think, uh, in terms perhaps of taste, she and her Defence Secretary, I just think, Anthony, they got a bit carried away today. I think they did, but they've got to be measured. And this is yet to the story. It's a long, long story to go. And we've got to see what happens on Sunday with Putin, of course, because there's an audience out there, which is Russia. Well, of and course. I think he, but he's going to gonna win. He's going to win, isn't he? He's ah, going to yes. win. He's going to win. So, Anthony, I, th I, I think he'll win. I thank you for your call. On Twitter, I get, you do ask some ridiculous questions, Nigel. Well, fair enough. I actually genuinely do think they've got carried away. And, and, I, and honestly... If the evidence was to turn out to be ever so slightly different from what they've told us, uh, then not only would they look very hubristic in their actions and words today, but public trust in politics would fall even further. James is a brand new caller to the show from Dulwich. Good evening, James. Good evening, Nigel. So what did you make of today? Well, Jeremy Corbyn was actually the, the bravest person in Parliament yesterday when he asked those questions, because time will, will, or history will show that he was the only one that act, were actually asking serious questions about the route that this government's taken over this matter. I mean, the evidence hasn't come in, and she, she used words as probability. I mean, we were told this in the Iraq thing. Yes. And he said, got on TV. Yes. And he, and he looked at everybody in the eyes and he said, I swear to you, I've been given information that I can't sw share with you, but they have got weapons of mass destruction. And then it came out years later. He, he, he honestly believed that, but he, he was misled by the security authorities. So you think, James, there is a possibility? That the, yeah, the, the, that the Prime Minister, who, who is striking an increasingly certain tone, I mean, just listen to Gavin Williamson, it was the Russians what done it. You know, you think they're, you think they're in danger of looking foolish on this. Well, as, as somebody's previously said to you, why would the Russians do something that 
blatantly points to the Russians with important things coming on, like the elections, the World Cup. It doesn't make sense. It's in Congress. Yeah, well, I, 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 James, a lot of people and, think and a, a lot failing, think that way. A lot think what's that failing, way. What, what's failed us is the press. The press just becomes the mouthpiece of the government. They don't ask any serious questions of the government. They just regurgitate everything that's been told to them, and then we're expected to believe that. Yeah, no, we Same are. Thing happens and and, in, and you in, know what, James? In Iraq. Fewer and fewer people are believing them. I thank you for that. Look, you know, my view hasn't changed on this. I think it was a Russian actor. I don't think it's certain that it was, you know, somebody who was told by the Kremlin or Putin to do this. I think, I think, I think Mrs May had to say something. My own view on this is what she should do is to demand a summit meeting with Putin to thrash this out face to face. That's what I think. Um, I get Vartex. Corbyn has got support on the ground. Well, he's got more support on the ground than he had in Parliament. Parliament yesterday, where he looked pretty isolated. But Parliament doesn't always get it right. Adrian is calling from Lydney in Gloucestershire. Good evening, Adrian. Good evening, Nigel. So, it's probably Russia, Adrian. It probably is. And as your previous caller said, uh, Saddam Hussein probably had weapons of mass destruction. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And we went to war for that on a probability. And Jack Straw mentioned that the other day on the TV. Um, very similar. It was a, going on a probability can, is not always the best thing to do. She had to say something, Adrian, didn't she? She did. She did. And I'm, I served in the first and second Gulf Wars. Yeah. <clears throat> um, troops being given the anthrax injection. Maybe naps tablets would probably be better. Nerve agent poisoning tablets. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but then, you know, it's all a bit of a show. Another angle, bit of a distraction from Brexit. Well, Adrian, I think whether it's a deliberate distraction or whether actually she's feeling an intense sense of relief mm. that she's not being asked about yeah. Brexit 24-7. Yeah. She's got another issue to get her teeth into and to show some leadership on. You may well be right. Adrian, I thank you very much indeed for your call. Disappointed in you, Nigel. The PM is wrong if she doesn't mix with the people in Grenfell. We, and I did criticise her for that very strongly indeed. Now you're criticising her for doing just that in Salisbury. Give us, give her our support, says Graham. Graham, I'm not criticising her for meeting people. I'm criticising her for going to the scene of a terrorist act and treating it like a street party. I think they've got rather overexcited by their own results in these opinion polls. Given the miseries they've gone through, I can't necessarily on a human level say I blame them, but I think her, and in particular this Gavin Williamson chap who is our Defence Secretary, folks, I know none of you know, and who says that Russia should go away and shut up I think they've struck the wrong tone. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show, exclusive on LBC. It's now 7.30 in time. Theresa May goes on a triumphal parade around the market square in Salisbury today, fist-bumping people, carrying flowers, smiling, looking as if it was a street party. Uh, she's doing well in the polls. She's appeared to be very strong. Some think she may have ever so slightly taken the probably it's Russia thing a little bit too far. I just think they're getting a bit carried away with it all. Now, I've done my very best this week, folks, to make this a Brexit-free zone. But Ian Dale has made that impossible. Because earlier on today, in this very studio, our esteemed former Chancellor of the Exchequer, one George Osborne, was in here defending his decision not to plan for Brexit. And let's just listen to what George Osborne had to say. Do you regret the fact that you didn't have anyone planning for Brexit at the time? I think it would have been extraordinary for a government that wanted to stay in the EU to plan for its departure. And indeed, God. any plan we came up with, which probably would have concluded staying in the single market, staying in the customs union, would have been bitterly contested by those who had just won the referendum. And, you so, know, do so leave, once you... Do you regret Riyal? Well, I regret Britain's decision to leave the EU. Well, we know that. We know that, don't we? Boy. And do you remember, the only contingency plan he did have was, do you remember, the emergency budget. He'd bring in an emergency budget and put taxes up and goodness knows what else. You know, I'd say this to you, George Osborne. 
Perhaps the most maligned political leader in the 20th century is Neville Chamberlain. Because he came back from Munich, didn't he? Waving his piece of paper, talking about peace in our time. But you know what? In that next year or so, the one thing the Chamberlain government did do was to start to prepare for war, to start producing spitfires and hurricanes in much bigger numbers. Not because they wanted war, they hoped they'd avoided it, but they did start to prepare for it. And the, and the argument that Osborne and Cameron didn't think it was necessary to prepare a Brexit plan because Boris and Jacob Rees-Mogg would disagree with it. Frankly, I think they completely, not just shirked their responsibilities, they showed their sheer arrogance in believing they would win. And there are many that would say that perhaps one of the reasons the government is constantly playing catch-up is none of that work was done during the referendum itself. And I thought his defence of that position with Ian Dale today was frankly pretty pathetic. Uh, let me know. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with that. Uh, you can tweet Farage and LBC at LBC and I will read some of them out. Right, back to back to Russia. Um, and, and yes, I think they're getting a bit carried away with themselves. I think perhaps that's a little bit dangerous. John is a new caller to the show from Glasgow. Good evening, John. Good evening, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So, the Prime Minister looks very strong. She's got a big consensus around her, John, in British elected politics and around the West. I just worry she's getting a bit carried away. Oh, she's in the clouds, Nigel. In the clouds. Is she? How can you, she's not get 100% proof it's Russia that's done that. There's no... It could be a Russian agent working for the European Union. It could be a Russian agent working for the British government. You never know. To go ahead of yourself and start throwing out ambassadors, that's a sign of war. That's a declaration of war. Well, equally, John, equally, John, to be fair, if Putin had sanctioned somebody using nerve gas in a public pizzeria and perhaps even in a pub too, that equally could be seen, perhaps, as an act of war, could it not? Um, it could be, yeah, but you need to remember, uh, you need to remember there's a weapons of mass destruction. I do. It wasn't, was there? There wasn't, was there? No, 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 jo 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 John, look, uh, uh, John, honestly, you know, one thing I've seen right from the start of, of, of this Russia debate that I've seen every night on this show is I feel there are a growing number of people out there who just don't trust a single word our politicians say anymore. Well, listen to the intelligence, right? Look, take your big mate across the pond, big Donald, right? Take big, his, big Donald. Exam, who, of course, Donald. who, of course, John is half... Who, of course, John is half Scottish, isn't he? Yeah, yes, he is. Proud of him. Well done. But take this, for example, the Russia... The Russia uh, helped him. And now we know Christopher Steele went to Yahoo News and gave them his fake wee notes. And then he went over to America and gave them as well. Well, I don't know. So, I'm not sure the Russians did help Donald Trump. But I think some of this stuff. No, I don't. I'm not saying they did. I'm saying the British agent Christopher Steele yes. used that against them. Oh he yes. And oh America. yes. And, and then it turned yeah. out, John, that it turned it's out all, it's all fake. That, that he was paid to say so. No, I agree with you. So, in a word, John, is is Theresa May perhaps by appearing as triumphalist as she is today, is she possibly setting herself up for a fall? Us up to make us look weak to get the big European Union and to back us up, and then they'll say, Oh, we helped choose one back. Oh, yes, oh, yes, and they're doing it today. Donald Tusk is doing it today, and indeed, I sat just a few feet away from Franz Timmermans, the deputy of the European Commission under Juncker, who said, Europe will come together as an act of solidarity beh you know, behind the United Kingdom, which is why you must all stay. John, I thank you very much indeed for your call. I'm going to go to Nick in Kings Lynn. Nick, good evening. Hello, Nigel. Well, be honest, I think this uh, spasm of an orgy of anti-Russian hysteria is, is uh, really upsetting your agenda a bit, isn't it? Uh, because it's all very well quoting some sky poll, putting May 60 points ahead of Jeremy Corbyn. Well, that's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, after yesterday, Nick, perhaps it is, but go on. Well, no, no it's obvious. Well, one, one of the reasons why it's obvious is because Corbyn's got his own Blairite party against him. 
But uh, quite, quite frankly, it's all been about Theresa May and uh, the government just riding off against the Russians. Just no evidence whatsoever. But Nick, that, I, I, are, are you Nick? Are you saying that from the yeah. start they've been using this horrible situation in Salisbury for political advantage? Oh yes, oh yes, I do, and I think well, uh, you, you should you should cotton on to it. Um, is, they're using it to cover up or obscure the fact that Brexit, the Brexit negotiations are failing. And I, yes, I, you know, that's a very big conspiracy theory, I know, but that is my view. No, actually, long, as, actually, Nick, as soon as I, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. Government, uh, faced with a difficult situation, standing up and being firm, uh, particularly when there's perceived to be a threat to the country, generally is very popular. And you have to say, in a sense, she's done that rather well. The worry, no, really. I, the worry, Nick, is that probability seems today, in the minds of our Defence Secretary, Gavin Williamson, have to turn into certainty, um, and she was in danger, in my opinion today, of looking a bit triumphalist. Yeah, but you see, what I'm saying is you don't like the fact that she's getting all this kind of attention, when really you want to try and make political capital yourself uh, out of the fact that she's not doing well no, on... I, Nick, I, I Nick, I tell you what, I tell you what, Nick, I volunteer now, despite my various neck and back injuries, I volunteer now, you know, to join the group that carries her shoulder high through every street in London if she delivers us the Brexit we voted for, Nick. I promise you. <laughs> OK, well, I'd like to see that day, but I don't think it will happen. <laughs> you never know, but I thank you for your call. Robin is calling from Whitehaven in Cumbria. Good evening, Robin. Hello, Nigel. Uh, um, I'd like to say Theresa May has been very, very reckless uh, to the point where she could endanger the United Kingdom on the basis of probability. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'd also like to say is she's taken it, she's seen an opinion swing, um, and now she's taken the advantage of it to score political points. And that's what I think is absolutely vile and disgusting. Um, and then we have Gavin Williamson, of all people, comes on and looks absolutely pathetic. Shut up and go away. What would his next words be? Or I'll tell my mum. You know I'll tell you what, Robin. I'll tell you what, Robin. Why don't we, whilst you're on the line, because I agree with you, let's see if the others agree with us. I think it was absolutely pathetic. Let's listen to our Defence Secretary, Gavin Williamson, again. What we will do is we will look at what Russia, how Russia responds to what we have done. It is absolutely atrocious, atrocious and outrageous what Russia did in Salisbury. We have responded to that. Frankly, Russia should go away. It should shut up. Now, Robin, that is one of our senior leading political figures in this country. How about that? You, you know what, Nigel? Um, I honestly think if we have to wait until we've found out 100%, now, if Vladimir Putin turned round and said boo to Theresa May and Gavin Williamson, they would scarper. If this escalates into military action, which Putin could, could Putin, Vladimir Putin is unpredictable. If this escalates into military action on the back of probability, I think that's a disgusting, dangerous thing. Now, Jeremy Corbyn behaved and he got ridiculed for it. But you've got to have 100% proof before you endanger life, yeah. risk, conflict. You go and ask, Nigel, this is a very serious I, question. I think, Robin, the problem was that Corbyn is perceived to be weak on national security anyway, and that was what perhaps did him damage by yesterday. Who? Perceived by who? Be, be perceived by the media who supports Theresa May and the Conservatives. So well, I think, Robin, his history with Sinn Féin, Gerry Adams, um, Hamas, Hezbollah, etc. Um, but, Robin, you're, you, you are genuinely... Robin, thank you for your call. Robin from Whitehaven, genuinely worried that on a probability, a war of words escalates, perhaps, into something far more serious. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's now 7.46. Before we came on air, we learnt that several people have died after a pedestrian bridge in the US collapsed onto a road, leaving many trapped in cars. It was only installed last Saturday at the Florida International University. The Florida Highway Patrol have confirmed multiple fatalities, but they haven't yet given a number. Stay with LBC for further updates throughout the course of this evening. Back to, back to Russia. Support from France. 
Germany, America. Um, a big consensus in Parliament. May says probably it was the Russians that did this. Uh, and she now appears to have had a big boost in the polls. And she turns up in Salisbury for what appears to be a little bit of a victory walkabout. I think they're beginning to get carried away with themselves. That's my view. I wonder what Carol, who's a brand new caller from Halliwell in Flintshire, thinks. Good evening, Carol. Hello, Nigel. Um, I've been, I'm very interested in, in this because this is a, na a, a national catastrophe. And I listen to the phone-ins and I'm, the complacency of the British people at the moment <clears throat> is frightening me. In what way, Carol, in what way are they complacent? Well, they just keep saying, well, she can't prove it. You know, how, how does she know it's Putin? Putin wouldn't do this, Putin wouldn't do that. I wouldn't trust Putin in a, in a, in a, in a sweet shop. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. No. I, I, I think, no, and I think uh, uh, Theresa May going today, I think that was, was very good of her. Very, very, well, it was Prime Minister's job. Well, no, I, uh, Carol, I think going is the Prime Minister's job. Of course I do. In fact, I'm very surprised, in many ways, she hadn't gone before. My point, Carol, is she was there at the scene of a crime, of something that was akin to a terrorist act, and it was being treated like a street party. No, that wasn't her fault. She went to see the people, to tell the people, or to sort of say, you know, I'm here, we're all looking after you, just take care. No, I'm not a Tory. I'm not a Labourite. But I think at this moment in time, the two parties should get together and support this. Well, Carol, yesterday in Parliament, they pretty much did, and Corbyn, within the political system, paid a price for it. I thank you very much indeed for your call. Nigel, you were doing the bidding of Russia. We are stronger in Europe, and you know it. Oh, please, just because some bureaucrat makes a speech and says we're all behind you doesn't make us stronger in Europe. And I'm, I'm certainly not doing Russia's bidding, but I equally, I equally would love to see a little bit more proof. I've said from the start of this, I believe it's a Russian actor. But the question is, is it actually approved by the Kremlin? What has happened here? Victor is a brand new caller from Orpington. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. So, did you think Mrs May looked the part today? Yes, I did. OK. OK. It was, I mean, it was a crime scene. Two people are critically ill in hospital, Victor. We've been told it's one of the most serious situations we've faced in this country for years. 500 people have been warned. They've got to, you know, wash their jewellery and, 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 and their clothes. And she goes around carrying flowers and fist-bumping people. Well, two and two has always been four. The only people that have produced this product, who had the money to produce this product, has the science to produce this product, we know who they are, the Russians. Victor, I don't they think... I, Victor, I don't think anyone doubts this substance came from Russia. I don't think that's in doubt. Well, some people have been saying all sorts of things. Well, I, well, I don't doubt... I don't doubt that's true for one little moment. Exactly. Uh, all I've said is... All I've said is, Victor, we cannot be sure it's Putin. It could be a rogue agent. But, Victor, I'm talking about her as a Prime Minister turning up at a crime scene that turned into a street party. Was that actually appropriate? Or is? Is she? It may be the relief she of it not being Brexit every day. Was that the right way to do it? Well, she had to... I think it's most people of, of that stature, of um, from ministerial people, would go and visit a scene like that, show their solidarity with the local people. There's nothing wrong in that whatsoever. So, you know, there, there's right. nothing... All right, and what about, Victor, what do you make of the comments of the Defence Secretary, Gavin Williamson, telling Russia to go away, that they should go away and shut up? I think it's rather good. Do you? OK, yeah, fine, all right. Well, Victor, you disagree with my view on this completely, and, hey, you know, in a sense, uh, that's what we're here on LBC for. So it's time to get tough, Victor, yeah? See, one more thing I'd like to say. Go on. We ought to pull out... To those are people that have any power... To pull out of the games, you don't go playing footsie. That people that, are tr that are, do such a callous thing, they've been getting away with murder for years. These it's not the Russian people. The Russian people are good people, ordinary Russians. So it's, should we? It's, it's so, Putin's so, people. So Victor, if you were in charge, if you were in charge, you'd stop the football team going to the World Cup. Oh, yeah? I certainly would. Victor, 
you're a man of strong opinions. I thank you very much indeed for calling the show. Hi, Nigel. Labour Corps voters are not losing any sleep over cuts to the diplomatic corps. What was Corbyn thinking? He's lost a lot of voters. That was, I think, I mean, to, to be honest with you, whoever sent that, that was the moment yesterday when everybody booed, uh, and I did too. I think that that really wasn't a very good line. You simply can't blame cuts for absolutely everything. Ted is a first-time caller from the delightful Corf Castle in Dorset. Good evening, Ted. Hello, Nigel. Hello there. So, am I right in thinking she got a bit... She and Gavin Williamson have got a bit carried away with their poll successes? I'm afraid I think they've got it horribly wrong. Oh, do you? And I shall tell you why, very simply. Yep. If you get an international situation brewing up like this, you don't just turn around and start screaming your head off to say... Oh, 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 it's the Russians because the stuff was made in Russia. You, you, you do actually start saying, we're awfully sorry, what's going on, and so on. But in the background, you have to get in touch on the quiet so that you say you need the Russians to help you to make sure. Because they wouldn't have done that deliberately in, on, in the open. They're not that stupid. That's well, I see it. But they haven't so, done... so, so, Ted, would you have given them some of the substance that was recovered? Absolutely. And I would have done it entirely on the QT, and I would have done everything I could to encourage them to give us a hand to resolve this. Absolutely. OK, so, well, in that case, you really think she's got this horribly wrong, don't you? Well, um, I'm afraid it's Theresa May being Theresa May, and she's using this as a political opportunity, um, and she's being um, led by the nose by the EU, who are going to do everything <laughs> to suck up to her, to be honest with you. <laughs> Tough words from Dorset, Ted. Thank you very much indeed for your call. Um, May issued a provocative ultimatum to Putin before gleaning the facts. She has lost the plot. Loath though I am to agree with Corbyn, he's right on this. She's trying for a Falklands moment. Fail is what I get on Twitter. My last caller this evening on this subject is Ronica, who's calling from Harrow. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you for my call, Nigel. I've spoken to you once before. I remember, I remember, I remember. So, so Ronica, she went to Salisbury, uh, and as I say, my feeling, and I mean, the last caller, Victor, disagreed very strongly with me, my feeling is she went to something that effectively was akin to a terrorist incident. There were two people seriously ill, and she turned it into a street party. Right. Well, the way, I, the way I viewed it, and I've seen the images as well, um, she went there for exactly what you said. Why do you think the other people turned up? Don't you think they turned up because the Prime Minister was in the area? And yes, and she's yeah, and she's a big celebrity. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I completely I complete understand well, that. And at the end of the day, yes, yeah, she has had a tough time, but if she was going to ignore those people that wanted selfies, they wanted things done, yeah. um, that would also have gone against her. Yes, I understand that, Ronica, and I understand the criticism of her over Grenfell. I just think she could have done it in a slightly more, and here's me talking about her, a slightly more serious mood. It looked like a street party. I thought it was a bit much. Okay, I tend to disagree on this one. All right, fine. No, Ronica, uh, that is the thing about LBC. We're able to disagree with each other and nearly always in a fairly civil manner. Right, my next episode of Farage Against the Machine is out tomorrow. Find out more on lbc.co.uk. I'll be back on Sunday morning at 10 to 9 at Ian Collins. But up next, it's Beverly Turner. Thank you, Nigel. 